The right to vote is one of the most precious rights we as Americans enjoy. By voting on leaders and issues, we help determine our way of life. You, as an election worker, play a vital part in ensuring that everyone is able to vote in a secure and fair manner. This video is designed to help you on Election Day in setting up the polling place, allowing voters to vote, and assisting those with disabilities. More than 40 million people in the United States are disabled. You can help make voting accessible and pleasant for everyone. For elections held on Saturdays, the polls will open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. You must arrive at the polling place no later than 6.30 a.m. If the building isn't open or the commissioner in charge has not arrived by 6.30 a.m., call the clerk of court's office. For elections held on Tuesdays, the polls will open at 6 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. You must arrive at the polling place no later than 5.30 a.m. If the building isn't open or the commissioner in charge has not arrived by 5.30 a.m., call the clerk of court's office. As a poll worker, you must vote during the early voting period because you may not be assigned to work in your own precinct and you may not leave the polling place on election day. Any breaks during the day should be organized by the clerk and or the commissioner in charge while you remain at the polling place. Check the label on top of each voting machine to make sure you have the correct machine or machines for your precinct. If not, call the clerk's office immediately. The key envelope A will have the voting machine keys. Check the ward, precinct, and location on the envelope to make sure you have the correct voting machines. The yellow capped key opens the back door and front panels on the machine. The silver key opens the polls. The voting machine keys have serial numbers that match the serial number on the sides and the top of the voting machine. If these numbers do not match, call the clerk's office immediately. Each precinct will have supplies in a green canvas bag in the back of the supply or lead voting machine. An audio headset is also in the back of the supply or lead voting machine. The supplies include a general forms envelope and a precinct specific envelope. The informational pamphlet for election day voting can be found in the general forms envelope. It contains the oath and open polls checklist. The oath is located on the back of the informational pamphlet. The commissioner in charge administers the oath on election day to all commissioners and takes the oath himself or herself prior to the opening of the polls on election day. Position the voting machines, lock the wheels, plug in the first machine, and daisy chain the others together. Look for the yellow AC power light to confirm power is working on the voting machines. It is very important that you open every machine. If you observe any physical damage to any machine, make a notation on the machine certificate. And if service is needed due to damage, call the clerk of court or the voting machine warehouse technician immediately. If there's a power outage, voting can continue by battery power, but notify your clerk of court immediately. Compare the red protective seal number for the clear plastic cover over the blue results cartridge with the cartridge seal numbers found on key envelope A. Make sure this is verified for each machine. If these numbers do not match or a seal has been broken, call the clerk's office immediately. Safety hazards and barriers to voters must be secured and removed. Check your voting area for objects that might cause a mobility hazard. Look for electrical cords, clutter, unsecured mats or rugs, locked doors, or any other barrier to voting machines. If temporary accessibility equipment is being used, such as ramps, temporary signs, cones, or mats, make sure they're in place. Call the clerk's office immediately if you're missing any accessible temporary equipment. All polling places will have at least one A-frame Vote Here sign to be placed outside the polling place at the start of the election day and picked up at the end of the election day. Place the signs where voters can see them from the road while driving on election day. 
The drayman will deliver these signs with the voting machines and you should return them to the voting machines at the end of the day. Attach the operator panel by hanging it on the exterior of the voting machine. Remove the audio bag and connect the audio unit to the back of the voting machine. Turn the red knob for the power on off function to the on position. Please wait for the voting machine to completely power up. Look at the operator panel. It should read, ready to open polls, election. If you get any error message, it is important to call the clerk's office and speak to a machine technician to report the error and get instructions before proceeding. Open the polls on every voting machine. To open the polls, insert the silver key into the polls open, polls close slot and turn the key to the open position. You'll hear an electronic sound, remove the key, and place it in the B2 key envelope, which is in your precinct supplies. It is important to remove the silver key so that you do not turn the key to the closed position before the end of the voting at 8 p.m. If you were to turn the key to the closed position, you could no longer use this machine. If this happens, call the clerk for another machine. After opening the polls, the official election zero proof report will automatically begin printing. You can begin setting up the front of the voting machine while the report is printing. Move to the front of the voting machine and pull the voting panel up in a vertical position. It won't drop or fall. This is the position to use for voters who need to be seated while voting. Now move to the back of the voting machine and pull the maroon latch and tilt the voter panel until it's resting on the back of the voting unit. Move to the front of the voting machine again to unlock the front panel using the yellow capped key. Unfold the doors, carefully raise the top white panel with one hand and move a side door into place, joining it with the bracket on the inside top of the door, then joining the second door. Remove the curtains from the tube by pushing the release button on the tube above the wheels. Unroll the curtains and open the frame into a U shape. Gently push the arms of the curtain frame through the open knobs on the inside of the front doors. Note that there is a full page magnifier on the inside front door of the supply or lead voting machine for anyone's use to be able to magnify the ballot on the voting machine. Remove the zero proof report and review to verify the time, the serial number on the voting machine, and the protective counter to the number on the lower left hand corner of the operator panel screen. Make sure the public counter is zero. Verify the ward and precinct are correct and verify that all candidate and proposition counters are zero. If any ballot information is not correct, call the clerk's office. If it is all correct, fill in the date on the zero report and have all commissioners sign the report before posting it at the entrance to the polling place. Thread the operator panel cord through the groove in the back door. Close and lock the door with the yellow capped key. Place all voting machine keys in the B2 keys envelope and seal. All commissioners sign the key envelope and it remains sealed until voting is complete or if the keys are needed to service a voting machine. All service information must be documented on the back of the envelope. Before voting begins, complete the first part of the machine certificate by writing the time the keys were delivered, the serial number of each machine, the protective seal number of each blue results cartridge, the numbers shown on the protective counter on each machine, and list any visible damage to any voting machine. Post the signage from your supply pack at the entrance to the polling place using the white stickers included in your supplies. This includes the election date and hours poster after you've filled in the correct date and polling hours prior to posting. Also post the picture ID notice to the voters and the sample ballot. You also have an accessible entrance sign that may need directional arrows added to show voters where to enter the polling place for disabled voters. Also, post the Louisiana Voters Bill of Rights. 
This poster has everything the voter may want to know about registration, how to use the voting machine, prohibited laws, who to contact to report fraud, etc. As commissioners, you should be very familiar with the operation of the voting machine, and you may instruct a voter on how to operate it. The supplies also contain a red stop sign. Commissioners post the stop sign outside the polling place entrance to remind voters that no political activity, electioneering, or political materials are allowed within 600 feet of the entrance to the polling place. If there are any political signs within this 600-foot campaign-free zone, commissioners must remove these signs unless the signs are on private property. Political activity, electioneering, or political materials include shirts, caps, buttons, cards, etc. that promote a candidate or an issue. They are not allowed. A voter can go to the restroom and turn his or her campaign shirt inside out. Remember, commissioners may not make comments about candidates, propositions, or constitutional amendments. Commissioners have the power to ask any person who is electioneering or disturbing voting in any way within the 600-foot campaign free zone to leave the premises after voting. If they do not follow the commissioner's order, call law enforcement. On occasion, commissioners may need to post a notice of candidate withdrawal or disqualification, but only if instructed to do so by the clerk of court. For the sign-in table, commissioners are required by law to have voter registration applications available next to the precinct register. Voters may use an application to update their voter registration or to register to vote. Individuals known as watchers may appear to monitor voting, but they may not interfere with voting. They may call out infractions of the law to the commissioner, and they may take notes, but they are not allowed to review or copy from the precinct register, as it contains confidential information. Watchers must have a commission issued by the Parish Board of Election Supervisors. Verify the commission and then return it. Candidates and those supporting or opposing a proposition are entitled to one watcher and alternate watcher at every precinct where the candidate or proposition is on the ballot. A watcher and alternate may not serve at the same time, but they can split the day or come and go, but may not disrupt voting. A candidate may also have one commission super watcher who is allowed into the candidate's precincts at the same time as either the watcher or alternate watcher. Commissioners have the authority to regulate the number of watchers inside the polling place if necessary. Exit pollsters, who are with national media outlets, may be authorized to be at a polling place. This usually occurs during a presidential election. The clerk of court will inform you if any exit pollsters are authorized at your polling place for election day. Before voting begins, cut the red seal on the precinct register and place it in the green canvas bag. You can find a new red seal either in the front of the precinct register or in the green canvas bag for resealing after the polls close. There are two important things to remember about the precinct register. One, always add the supplemental precinct register pages to the binder and use them to find voters when they are not in the original pages of the precinct register. And two, always work the supplemental list of absentee voters by finding the voter's name in the precinct register and writing voted by mail on their signature line and initialing so that if they come into the precinct to vote, you will know that they have already voted. You may also receive a call from the registrar to mark voted by mail on a voter's signature line if a ballot is received by the registrar from a military service person or overseas citizen on election day. The precinct register contains tabs for specific information. The supplemental tab is where you put a supplemental precinct register or list of voters who need to be added to the precinct register. This list is to be delivered to each precinct by the clerk's office on election day before voting begins. If you have not received it and you need to know if a person is authorized to vote, call the registrar or secretary of state's office for assistance. Remember, Check these supplemental precinct register pages if you do not find a voter's name in the original precinct register. 
The Voted by Affidavit tab contains blank precinct register pages for commissioners to print a voter's name and have them sign when using a precinct register correction or PRC form. This form is used for an error in the precinct register or when a voter's name is not found in the precinct register or the supplemental precinct register and an election official authorizes the voter to vote. In order to vote, a person must either have a photo ID or complete a voter identification affidavit. For photo ID, commissioners may accept any generally recognized photo ID that has the voter's name and signature. That's what's important, the photo, the voter's name, and the voter's signature. So a Louisiana driver's license, Louisiana special identification card, school ID, or even an out-of-state driver's license is acceptable if it contains the three important things, the photo, the voter's name, and the voter's signature. Commissioners must compare the voter's name and, if available, compare the date of birth to the information in the precinct register to make certain that the person before you is the same person in the precinct register and not someone else with the same name. Do not turn away a voter for lack of identification. If a voter does not have a photo ID, they must complete a voter identification affidavit. The voter will be required to write their date of birth and mother's maiden name and sign it. Mother's maiden name is required on all voter registration applications and therefore you will see each voter's mother's maiden name on the precinct register or if unknown you will see the word unknown. Commissioners must compare the voter's name and the date of birth and the mother's maiden name on the affidavit with the information in the precinct register to make certain that the person before you is the same person in the precinct register before allowing the person to vote. If the applicant is unable to read or write or cannot complete the affidavit due to a disability, a commissioner may assist him in completing the affidavit. All voters who complete a voter identification affidavit are subject to challenge before voting by a commissioner, a watcher, or other voter in the precinct if they do not believe the person is who they say they are or should not be voting in the precinct or in the election. Challenges are made using the challenge of voter at polling place form. The commissioners are responsible to vote and determine whether to allow the challenge or not. After identifying the voter, find the voter's name in the precinct register or supplemental precinct register in alpha order by last name. A female may be listed under a maiden name or a married last name, and therefore, you may need to ask and check several last names to find the voter. Always check the signature line for a voter, and if it has a notation, then action may be required. If the notation reads voted by mail or voted early, the voter may not vote at the polls. If the signature line reads address confirmation required, the voter must complete an address confirmation card, election day form, before being allowed to vote. This form is required for the voter to affirm their residential address or provide an updated address. Each year, the registrar conducts a canvas to confirm each voter's address, and if the address is not verified, it must be verified before voting or updated. If a voter moved out of the parish within the last three months before the election, they may provide their updated address and vote. However, the form instructs the voter that if they cannot affirm that they moved within the last three months, then they are not to vote and can complete a voter registration application and give it to you to get registered to vote in the next election at their new address. All complete voter registration applications are to be placed in the ROV envelope. Now is a good time to tell you how to remember what forms go where. All pink forms go in the pink ROV envelope. All blue forms go in the blue P16 put in voting machine envelope. All yellow forms go in the yellow S19 Secretary of State's envelope. And if you are not sure what goes where, don't worry. Just look on the front of the envelope for a list of items to return in each envelope or look in your informational pamphlet.
After finding the voter's name in the precinct register or supplemental precinct register and confirming that they are eligible to vote, have the voter sign the precinct register at this time. You must initial next to the voter's name in the precinct register, being careful not to write in the barcode area to show that you viewed the voter's identification. The commissioner will now announce the voter's name and spell the name out loud to the two commissioners writing names in the blue and yellow duplicate poll lists. It's important that the voters' names are correctly spelled in these poll lists. Commissioners writing the names in the blue and yellow poll lists should print the names. Please do not write in cursive. It is okay for a commissioner who works the precinct register to also keep a poll list if necessary. Each poll list has a notation of irregularities page at the back. It is important to document anything that happens on Election Day regarding a voter or a machine. Some examples would be a commissioner votes forgetting they were not at their home precinct, the polls were opened late, there were problems with the machine, etc. Anything unusual or out of the norm must always be documented as an irregularity. Remember, you can check the public counter numbers on your machines with the number of voters on your poll lists, and they should match. If they don't, note the discrepancy on the notation of irregularities page with the time and details. At the end of the elections, commissioners must complete the back page of each poll list showing that their numbers match or explaining why they do not match. It is important to watch and allow any voter who has a visible physical disability, such as a voter in a wheelchair or with a walker or cane, and the person assisting to go to the front of the line. Also, any voter who presents an official OMV mobility impaired ID card with a photo and the person assisting may go to the front of the line. Always use proper etiquette to talk to a voter and not his or her assistant if they are disabled and always ask before assuming that a person may need help. For example, do not take a visually impaired voter's arm, but offer your own arm as assistance. Do not touch any sight animal without asking the voter first. And for a hearing impaired voter, you may gently tap his or her shoulder and point when showing where to go. And remember that the commissioner may not decide if a person is competent to vote. If a voter has trouble understanding you, Patiently repeat or rephrase your instructions. Plainly give one instruction at a time and wait until the task is completed before giving the next. Feel free to physically demonstrate how to operate a voting machine. And if a voter is in a wheelchair, you may lower the voting machine to help them cast their ballot. Download the free app for Go Vote through your app store for smartphone or tablet and you may assist a voter on election day to look up his correct polling place if needed or inform the voter so that they may look up their own information. All voters must sign the precinct register. If a voter is unable to sign, they may make a mark. Commissioners use signature on the photo ID to compare the voter's signature in the precinct register, and if satisfied that it is the voter, initial the signature line. What do you do if you do not believe this is the person? Use a challenge of voter at polling place form. What if a voter needs assistance or asks for assistance in voting? Our law allows a voter to have assistance if they are unable to read or have a physical disability, including being visually impaired. Voters may be registered to vote as needing assistance. If so, you will find a Y for yes in the assistance column in the precinct register. If so, they are entitled to have assistance from anyone they choose, except a commissioner in charge, a candidate, an employer, a union agent, or by rule, the staff from state operated facilities for disabled persons. If there is no Y in the assistance column, the voter who has a physical disability may receive assistance after completing a physical disability form and completing a voter registration application, or the voter may present a disability document. Such documentation may be either a doctor's certificate, an official OMV mobility impaired ID card with a photo, or a copy of a disability letter from Social Security, Veterans, 
citizens with developmental disabilities, Louisiana Rehabilitation Services, or paratransit services. Remember that our law does not require documentation if a voter is not marked for assistance and they request assistance because they are unable to read. A doctor's certificate and copies of any disability document must be kept and placed in the Registrar of Voters envelope. If the voter does not have a copy, have them complete the physical disability affidavit and the voter registration application instead. And don't forget to always return a mobility impaired ID card to the voter. You may also offer the audio unit as any voter may use the audio unit without any documentation or notation of being marked as needing assistance. Before the voter votes with assistance, the person assisting must print their name and sign in the back of the precinct register behind the Assistance to Voters tab. Also, there is a new box for the commissioner to check if there is no Y in the assistance column for the voter. This will inform election officials that the commissioner allowed the voter to have assistance in accordance with the law when the precinct register did not show the voter as marked for assistance. Always look for the button number for each voter in the precinct register to activate the machine correctly. If you need to, write it down to give to the commissioner who is activating the machine. On the operator panel, press the button number for the voter, such as button 1, then press the green Activate button. If the voter's button number is 3, you would press button 3 and then the green Activate button. If you accidentally press a wrong button number, it is okay for you to press the correct button number before pressing Activate. But if you have already pressed the Activate button with an incorrect button number, call the clerk's office for help. If there is no button number in the precinct register, you simply activate the machine by pressing the green Activate button on the operator panel. Once the voting machine is activated, it will make a sound and the light next to the Activate button will light up. The display screen on the operator panel will read Voter Active and the booth light will come on. Tell the voter to enter when it's his turn. Curtains won't automatically open and close. You may inform the voter on how to operate the voting machine by telling the voter to look for the green header lights by the titles of offices that he can vote for, not the box where you make your selection for a candidate. To vote for a candidate, a voter must press the white box to the right of the candidate's name or next to the yes or no for propositions. A green X will light up to the left of the box, not actually inside the box. You may also instruct a voter that to change a vote, the voter must deselect their choice by pressing the white box again by the candidate or the yes or no for a proposition. The green X will disappear and the voter must then press the white box by the new candidate or the yes or no for the proposition. Again, the green X will appear to the left of the box and not actually in the box. After making all selections, the voter must press the orange cast vote button in the bottom right hand corner. You'll hear an electronic beep like this. A vote is not recorded until the cast vote button is pressed. Also, the voter must vote for at least one candidate or proposition for the cast vote button to work. A voter is allowed to bring their child with them inside the voting booth. Encourage the voter to have the child stand on the left side to prevent the child from accidentally pressing the cast vote button before the voter is ready to finalize their vote. Nothing can be changed after the cast vote button is pressed. All voters are allowed three minutes to vote or 20 minutes if using the audio unit to vote. Refer to the informational pamphlet for election day voting or the quick chart guide to using the audio voting keypad located in the general forms envelope to inform a voter on how to operate the audio unit and before activating the voting machine. After each voter, the machine will automatically return to regular voting and is ready to be activated for the next voter. Remember that if a voter forgets to press the orange cast vote button, you must make sure his vote is recorded by reaching your hand under the curtain and pressing the button for the voter. Or if the voter has not left the polling place, you can have the voter return to press the cast vote button.
never enter the voting booth as the voter's selections are confidential. If the voter leaves without making any selections, then the commissioner will not be able to press the cast vote button and advance the machine. The precinct register will have one more person than the number of voters on the machine's public counter. This would be documented in the notation of irregularities on the last page of each poll list. Call the clerk's office for assistance if needed. Law enforcement officers are not stationed at polling places on Election Day, and they may not serve as commissioners, but they may appear and vote if they are on duty, and they may be called by the commissioners if needed to enforce the commissioner's order. Except for law enforcement officers, guns are not permitted at polling places, even if a person has a concealed carry permit. These prohibitions in the law are listed on the Voter's Bill of Rights poster. Secure the voting machines after the last person in line at 8 o'clock p.m. has voted. Never close the polls before 8 o'clock p.m. Move voters inside the polling place if possible, close and lock the doors, or post a commissioner at the end of the line at 8 o'clock, but let everyone in line vote. Commissioners should complete the Close Polls Checklist in the informational pamphlet at the end of voting. This includes filling out the back page of the two poll lists and signing it, then unlocking the back of the voting machines and closing the polls. Use the silver key to turn the polls open close slot to the closed position. You'll hear an electronic sound. Remove the key and the printer will print four election results reports. While these are printing, begin closing the front of the voting machine. Remove the curtain, roll it up, and place it in the storage tube. Return the full page magnifier to the pocket on the front door of the machine. Close and lock the front doors and lower the panel to the down position. After four copies of the results have printed and have been signed by all commissioners, break the security seal and remove the blue results cartridges from each machine, and then turn the red power on off knob to the off position. Remove the operator panel and return it along with the audio unit to the back of the machine. Complete the machine certificate and the affidavit of payroll. Distribute the four election results reports as follows. Tape one on the outside wall of the polling place or inside on glass so that it may be viewed from the outside using the white stickers provided in the green canvas supply bag. Place one report in the blue envelope, place one report in the yellow envelope, and place one report in the clear plastic zipper bag. If you are not sure where to place a form, simply look at the instructions on each envelope. You can also refer to the informational pamphlet for assistance. Remember that yellow forms go in the yellow S-19 Secretary of State envelope, blue forms go in the blue P-16 Put in Voting Machine envelope, and pink forms go in the pink Registrar of Voters envelope. The clear plastic zipper bag for the clerk's office must include the blue results cartridges from each machine, one of the official results reports that prints from each machine, the keys to all voting machines, the affidavit of payroll, and a machine certificate. When completing the affidavit of payroll form, remember that each commissioner should write his own information and certify that the information is correct. The commissioner's name must be the same as on the Social Security card, and the last four numbers of the Social Security number must be provided along with the mailing address, signature, and initials of each commissioner and the hours worked for each commissioner. Commissioner pay is based on these affidavits and are mailed by the Secretary of State's office usually 14 days after payroll is submitted by the clerk's office. Calling before that time may only delay the process of payroll. Remove the zero-proof sheet report from the wall and place it in the blue envelope. Take down all posters and signs from the wall and discard. All unused forms and supplies are to be returned to the green canvas bag to go into the back of the voting machine. 
Pick up the A-frame Vote Here sign from outside and place near the voting machine. Secure any temporary accessibility equipment, if any, and move equipment and furniture to their original places. Dispose of all trash and leave the polling place clean and neat. Seal the precinct register with the red seal. Place the sealed precinct register and the pink Registrar of Voters envelope in the Registrar's canvas bag, if one, or in the back of the voting machine. Four items go in the back of the voting machine. Precinct register and pink Registrar of Voters envelope, the blue P16 put in voting machine envelope, the green canvas bag with the general forms envelope, and the black audio bag. Deliver the clear plastic zipper bag to the clerk's office by the commissioner in charge immediately after closing the polling place and deposit the prepaid yellow S-19 Secretary of State envelope in a mailbox. There are many kinds of emergencies that can occur at a polling location, ranging from machine errors to major power outages, fires, or gas leaks, to name a few. So what would you do if your precinct encounters an emergency? First, analyze the severity of the emergency and ensure the safety of all poll workers and voters. Then call the clerk's office immediately. If you must exit the building and it is possible to safely retrieve the blue cartridges located in the back of the voting machines, please do so by unlocking the machines, powering it off, breaking the red seal over the blue results cartridge and removing the cartridge. Stand by for further instructions from the Clerk of Court's office and or the Secretary of State's office. Being the Commissioner in charge is vital to the success of the election process. It is essential to use your knowledge and experience to lead your team in completing all Election Day tasks accurately and timely. The voters in your community, the clerk, and Secretary of State depend on you and your team to be on time, to make sure the polls are open, and that all paperwork is accurately completed and legible. Be professional and courteous, but remember, you do not have to tolerate any situation that interferes with the voting process. Election Day is a long day for all parties involved, especially as the day wears on. Stay focused on the task at hand, and before you know it, you'll be driving the clear plastic zipper bag to the clerk's office, confident you didn't forget the blue cartridges and tapes. Remember, you're in charge, be in charge. Remember, if you have any trouble on election day, call the clerk's office. Elections are all about equal access and representation in government. By operating polling places on election day and showing extra effort to individuals with disabilities, you're helping the state of Louisiana meet its commitment to every voter to a fair and competent voting experience. Thank you. Provisional voting provides a fail-safe procedure for voting during federal elections when any person arrives to vote and is not listed as an eligible voter and is not authorized to vote by an election official. A provisional ballot is a paper ballot given to the voter so that they are able to cast their ballot provisionally until election officials verify the voter's eligibility to vote in the federal election. It is important to note that provisional voting is not convenience voting where a voter may appear anywhere in the state to vote and have their vote counted. <music> provisional ballots are only available during a federal election and only include federal races, which are the presidential preference primary, U.S. President, U.S. Senator, and or U.S. Representative. Provisional voting does not apply to local or state races, propositions, or constitutional amendments on the ballot during federal elections. Before they are given a provisional ballot, a person being considered as a provisional voter must certify in writing on the provisional ballot affidavit envelope 
that they are registered to vote in the parish and are eligible to vote in the election for federal office. If a voter arrives to vote and they are registered in the parish but at the wrong precinct, recommend to the voter that they go to their precinct to vote so they can vote on all candidates and questions, not just federal races. If a voter identifies with one of the following four categories, they may be given a provisional ballot. Number one, when a person's name does not appear in the precinct register or supplemental register and they are not authorized to vote by an election official. Number two, when a voter is challenged and a majority of the commissioners determine that the challenge is valid. Number three, when the clerk of court or the secretary of state informs the commissioners that a court has ordered extended poll hours. Or number four, when an inactive voter cannot vote on the voting machine because they cannot affirm that they moved outside the parish less than three months before the election and therefore are not eligible to vote in the election. Refer to the provisional voting chart in the informational pamphlet for detailed information. Please note, all forms and envelopes used with provisional voting will be printed with purple ink except the provisional ballot itself. There are two additional supply items included with the regular supplies in the back of the voting machine for federal elections. Number one, a braille booklet envelope, which will be located in the green canvas bag. And number two, a purple supply envelope for election day provisional ballots, which will be located in the precinct specific envelope. It will contain the provisional ballots and affidavit envelopes for the precinct, pencils, and a purple return provisional ballot envelope. It's important to remember to always open the purple supply envelope for election day provisional ballots and inventory your supplies in a federal election. Follow the instructions in the informational pamphlet for election day voting to allow for provisional voting in federal elections. When the election day ends, place all the voted provisional ballots, provisional ballot stubs, and all unused provisional ballots and affidavit envelopes in the purple return provisional ballot envelope and return it to the clerk of court in the clear plastic zipper bag. The braille booklet provides voting information for any voter with a visual impairment who reads braille and it will be returned to the green canvas bag. When allowing a person to vote a provisional ballot, the commissioner prints the voter's name in the precinct register behind the provisional voters tab. The voter signs next to his name, prints his address, and the commissioner initials. The person's name is also written in the two poll lists on the second to the last page, starting at number 1681. The commissioner selects the appropriate provisional ballot from the supply envelope, removes the ballot number stub from the bottom right corner, and retains the stub. The commissioner completes the top red portion of the provisional envelope flap by writing the ballot stub number in two places on the envelope flap and writing the ward, if any, and the precinct number. The envelope clearly states where the commissioner is to complete information and where the voter completes information. This is very important so the voter can later track the status of their provisional ballot. The voter completes the remaining information on the envelope flap and signs. The commissioner gives the voter the provisional ballot, the envelope, and a pencil and directs the voter to a private area where he can mark the ballot in secret. After voting, the voter seals the ballot inside the envelope and returns it to the commissioner. A pencil is provided so the voter may change their vote if they choose, but a voter may use a pen to mark the ballot and if the voter spoils his ballot, he may have a replacement ballot. Be sure to verify that all information is completed on the sealed envelope flap and that the voter has signed. It is important for the commissioner to remove the red to the provisional voter's top portion of the envelope flap and give to the voter so that the voter may track the status of their provisional ballot through the Secretary of State's website to see if it was counted. All provisional ballots and all unused provisional supplies must be returned to the clerk of court on election night. Commissioners complete the purple return provisional ballot envelope and place it in the clear plastic zipper bag for the clerk. If you are missing any provisional voting supplies, have questions, or need clarity regarding provisional voting on election day, call the clerk of court's office as soon as possible. 
it's always good practice to be prepared ahead of time as best you can. Our goal is to make sure everyone has the opportunity to go vote. We thank you for your time and dedication to our great state.